Now I'd like to have a look at the ATAM review, just as a comparison. This is the architecture trade-off analysis method. Now this, uh, this is a very structured method. Uh, it relies heavily on scenarios. Um, ATAM is probably, I mean, you don't start with the architecture and go review the whole thing. That's a different one. That's the Hasloff analysis. This one starts with the scenarios. So for this review method, you must have a collection of scenarios that are, for some reason, important to this application. Usually, these scenarios are ones that exercise um, alternatives or um, trade-offs between one function and another, or um, uh, try to investigate uh, critical functionality. Um, they're not just your happy case scenarios, they're, those, they're easy. Um, so, with this case, we're interested in the critical scenarios. They, this method is uh, designed to focus on the areas where these things matter and where these things happen. So, in its, in its uh, structure and construction, the method, uh, as it's supposed to be practiced, is very similar to a Fagan inspection, uh, if you know what that is. The success factors for a, a uh, ATAM review. Um, the success is highly dependent on the scenarios that drives them. If you put a happy case scenario through, it's not going to tell you much. Uh, we're interested in the, the really gnarly problems that this system, this architecture has to cope with. So the scenarios really ought to be those really nasty, tricky uh, scenarios that the system may have to handle. The good scenarios do have a habit of um, trying to uh, deal with competing qualities or competing um, functionality, competing characteristics or something. Now this can result in a large number of scenarios if you really want to go through it, but if it's critical enough, and some of these things are, then you're going to go through it. We, we really are talking about architecture of, of critical systems. So, for example, if you, uh, if you were uh, reviewing the architecture of a aircraft control system, well, if you've got to spend five days or five weeks on doing the reviews, that's what you'll do. I don't want my aircraft crashing on me. The participants in the ATAM review, um, we have the evaluation team. These are, um, uh, these, these are people with enough skill to know what they're looking at in the architecture. We'll have the project decision makers. Um, I'm not sure how. I'm not sure if they would take too much of a um, role, um, but they have to be there to be able to say no. You uh, to to rule on the importance of different features and um, various decisions in this context. The architecture stakeholders do have a vested interest, so you could get them involved as well. Uh, but be warned, um, too many people who are not that familiar with uh, architecture can lead to a lot of um, distracting discussions about um, things of very little importance. So although you ought to have uh, more than simply the architects there and people capable of understanding the architecture, you do need people representing the business side of it so they can prevent the techies from being too techy. All right, the ATAM phases. Um, the preparation, uh, like most of these uh, review techniques, good preparation matters an enormous amount. And the, the, the more and better you prepare your review, the, the better it's going to be. Now, I'm very aware that in um, so many reviews, so many people are so time poor, they actually rock up to the review, they've never read a damn thing. Now, um, this is not good. So, um, uh, I don't know how you get over that. If it's important enough, well, you just uh, call off the review and say, go back and go away and check it, and then we'll reschedule the review, and I'll tell all your bosses why we're rescheduling the review. review. Uh, people should do their homework. They should rock up prepared. Uh, so after the uh, preparation phase, there is actually, you do the, uh, the evaluation, and then there is the follow-up. The follow-up is to, to deal with um, uh, things that you find. In the evaluation, Somebody will be chairing this session. That's the usual thing. There's, there's quite a cast of characters and somebody is controlling the meeting. And uh, their job is to 
say what is going to be reviewed, um, how it will be conducted, like will everybody just have a free-for-all or will there you know, be voting by cards, show of hands or, or something of that nature, um, what, are we, what are you going to do if you run out of time, all this, what, what are the rules of, if you like, the rules of combat, the rules of the game. Uh, they normally also will present the business drivers. Uh, this, if you have stakeholders in the room, this can be a good check. Have we understood what matters to you? So uh, we need to know uh, what what matters. And the, the reason for that is just to remind people that um, this architecture is produced in a context where uh, the, the qualities that matter are not necessarily what the architects or the other techies think ought to matter. The whole idea is to satisfy the stakeholders. Um, usually then the, the person conducting the review will have a, a brief talk about the architectural approaches, um, how they went about this, the, um, the patterns, the styles, the, you know, how architecturally did they try and solve it? Um, what compromises did they have to make and, and anticipate in some ways some of the objections? Now the reason for doing this is because um, frequently you, you will get into the review and there'll be some question about why did you guys do this, it doesn't make any sense. Well we did this because um, we had to satisfy this other constraint over here which is a bit more important. So you know, we had to trade these things off and this is, this is where the trade-off came out. Are you going to do it at one place or the other? So you might as well do it at the front of the uh, evaluation and save a bit of time later. Then you go through and re you review the architecture against the scenarios. Now, personally, I would take it scenario by scenario, not through the architecture from you know, the head of the architecture down to the, the, the base of it. I would go through scenario by scenario because I want to know, will this scenario, is, how is this scenario um, catered for? At the end of it all, I uh, present the results. Now, if you manage to do your ANTAM review in, um, I think, recommended time is an hour that people can actually concentrate, then great, this is, this is really good. Um, but I have seen engineers, particularly you know, telecommunications engineers, run a review for the entire day. How they could actually think straight at the end of the day is beyond me. ATAM outputs. Um, the output of it all uh, you will get a concise representation of the architecture, okay? You've had to prepare that in order to do the review. You'll get an articulation of the business goals and some agreement on those or corrections to those, but you'll have the articulation of the business goals. You will have the quality requirements in terms of a collection of scenarios. This is usually where there are compromises made and usually where uh, some illustration of what do you mean by fast? What do you mean by secure? What do you mean by reliable? What do you mean by robust? What do you mean by modifiable? All of these would have to be scenarios that you run through. Can we provide that? Be a set of identified sensitivity and trade-off points. So there will be some parts, some places in the architecture where you, you've had to do one thing or the other. Um, uh, sometimes because you really just can't compromise the quality. You can't compromise the architecture. You, you either do it this way or you do it that way. You, you can't blend them. So you'll have a list of all of those and what they are, and you'll have a set of risk themes. Okay. So the ATAM review is um, more structured and rigorous than a general evaluation. Uh, it is intended to go and review the, the critical elements of, um, not the critical elements of the architecture, but the critical elements of the system that the architecture must address. So that's what it's intended to do. They are formal, they are structured, and they are quite similar to code inspections.